I've been using the 12.9 inch iPad Pro in the last three years for architecture design, personal computing, and occasional entertainment. Pretty sure by now I've qualified to join the Apple cult with my iPhone, iPad, MacBook Pro, Apple Watch, and AirTag. In this video, I'm going to share my honest opinion about the iPad. Number one, is it a laptop replacement? Number two, what exactly do I use it for? Three, how important are the specs? And four, why I would never switch to using Windows again. If you're still on the fence about buying one, then keep watching. If at the end of this video you are convinced, then feel free to check out my other video on which iPad you should buy for architects. Hi, my name is Henry and on this channel I share tech tips, career thoughts, and drawing tutorials to help you excel in architecture. So make sure to subscribe. So let's get into the big question first. Is this a suitable laptop replacement? Um, the short answer is no, at least not yet. But interestingly, I've been spending more time on my iPad than my 16 inch MacBook Pro, and I'll tell you why. So recently I got the Magic Keyboard, which I hesitated to buy for the longest time because of its price tag at $300 plus tax. But one day I saw this deal at Best Buy that it was selling for half the price for a open box one. So I bought one finally. And after using it for some time, I kind of regretted not buying it sooner because now my iPad feels so much closer to a laptop than ever. Both the keyboard and uh, the trackback are well constructed and really pleasant to use. And unlike my much cheaper uh, plasticky Logitech keyboard that I will often mistype on. Also, unlike the other third-party keyboard, the Magic Keyboard stands completely on its own and holds the iPad in an upright position so I can sit on the couch and use the iPad like I would with my computer. While it's not exactly water resistant, I feel a lot better using it in areas where there could be a potential water spillage like the kitchen island. I really destroyed one MacBook many years ago when I had a smoothie that kind of exploded in my backpack. So I basically had to throw out the entire Mac because of it. Um, with the Magic Keyboard, I am going to be a lot less sad to chuck away a $200 keyboard than a fully specced out 16 inch MacBook Pro. Especially now I have a baby, you never know what they're going to knock things over. The iPad is also much lighter and easier to move around than my MacBook around the house because I like to switch locations quite often during the day from working in the office to the kitchen island and onto the couch. Now, for many things that I normally do on my computer, I can just easily do on my iPad, like sending out emails, taking meetings, and even reviewing drawings. With all that positive things said, I still need my laptop for many reasons. Unless I have a team of minions running around that I can tell and point them to do exactly what I want, I still have to draw in AutoCAD, put together presentations in InDesign, and uh, occasional Bluebeam access. But if you're hoping to spend less time sitting at a computer desk, maybe you don't have a laptop, then the iPad with the Magic Keyboard will get you very close to using it as a computer while enjoying the portability as an iPad. However, if you are in a totally different position in your career, let's say you're like a senior architect or a principal who doesn't need to be involved with documentation, then an iPad might make more sense because you can just take it with you for client meetings or site visits where you're taking lots of photos and notes. But my sense is that most of you that are watching this video, that's probably not going to be the case. For me, the iPad has become such an indispensable tool because my workflow totally revolves around it. But having a MacBook Pro is also very necessary because I live and breathe in the Apple ecosystem. And you'll find out why in the end. With that out of the way, more importantly, what exactly do I use the iPad for? Using it as the ideation tool is probably the main reason why I have one, not because of any of the other benefits. I can confidently say that I'm a better designer today because I can design faster, with more precision, and 
iterate my design like ever before. If you don't believe me, you can watch this video above as an example of my current workflow. I've proven with many projects that not only can I just doodle on the iPad, but I can actually execute an entire project from conceptual sketches into precise floor plans that are used in client presentations. I used to have a Wacom tablet, which I thought was already a huge step up from working with pen and pencils, but I was always tethered to a computer, which was a limitation of its own. And now with the portability of the iPad, I have little excuse to not be productive because I can draw on my bed, on the couch, in the car and in other kinds of weird positions too. So design aside, in my day to day with the Magic Keyboard, now I can send about 90% of my emails from the iPad. Because I use Dropbox to store all my files on the cloud, I can send files, drawings, and even share an entire Dropbox folder from any of my three Apple devices. I also have calls and text messages paired with my phone so I can text and pick up calls without my iPhone next to me kind of question why I even bought a phone that's just as expensive as the iPad to begin with, given that I get way more out of my iPad than my phone. So if you're in that dilemma, you should probably get the iPad first and then the phone second. Outside of the usual communication stuff, I use the iPad to read and mark up drawings. If I am just annotating, I will use this app called PDF Expert. Uh, which has a set of handy annotation tools that I use with my Apple Pencil. The ability to pinch and zoom with your finger on the screen is way faster than viewing it on the computer. If I need to sketch over something with more precision, I will usually fire up the drawing with Mofolio Trace, calibrate the drawing to scale first, and uh, do my markups on there. In either case, Having the ability to share your notes and sketches right away is very important and both of these apps does that job really well. Next is using it for note taking. I no longer carry a physical notebook. I actually never really carried one in the first place and I know that seems to be kind of the stereotype that an architect is to carry a Moskin with a fountain pen. That never really worked with me. Not because I don't like drawing, it's because I don't like carrying another thing because I lose them so often that I could never finish one from the start to finish. That's just me though. I've seen people using notebooks quite religiously from start to finish, and they'll actually archive it when they're done and put it on their bookshelf with the dates. I don't think that's something that I'm going to pursue and make a habit of right now. But on the iPad, I actually use this app called GoodNotes to record both my work notes and my personal notes. Um, it's a cloud-based app, which means I can access my notes from any of my three Apple devices, which I will always have at least one. And if I need to find something quickly, my handwritten notes can actually be searched on the app. It's like having a second brain with me at all times. And on site visits, I no longer carry any drawing sets, spec book, or meeting notes. All I need is my iPad and Dropbox that's preloaded with the entire project folder. In many projects where there's no cell or Wi-Fi reception on site, the files that are preloaded for offline use is actually really great for it. And in addition, I really like my ultra wide angle lens on the iPad Pro model to capture more of the space instead of taking a series of photos to do the same thing. This actually allows me to be more creative on site as well because I can visualize my drawings over the picture right away like someone would with a trace paper. The last thing I use my iPad for is portfolio storage. So I don't have the time or the money to have hard copies of my portfolio printed at all times that's up to date. Instead, I'll keep images of work that I've done on Dropbox synced to my offline use. This way I can just bring the iPad with me uh, to the client meetings and we'll flip through the images to see the work. And if they wanted a copy, I can just share the Dropbox link with them afterwards. Spec and sizes. I've actually owned many sizes of the iPad before, including the 9.7 inch iPad to the iPad Pro 11 inch and now to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. Personally, I've decided the 12.9 inch model is most appropriate for my needs. Sure, it's a little heavier than others, but the screen real estate is much more useful if you are using it to illustrate or work out a floor plan, which is 
mostly what I use it for. I really like the form factor of the smaller iPad with the 11 inch, but it just kind of feels a little too uncomfortable to be drawing on, especially when the menu bar is taking up some of that screen real estate. And for storage, mine came with 128 gigabytes of storage, which I think is adequate. It's close to halfway done, so there's plenty of room left. And I think the 64 gigabyte is probably too small for most people, unless you are very diligent about managing spaces and apps. Unless I started to record my videos with my iPad, I don't think I'll ever need more than 128 gigabytes of space. If money isn't an issue, get the iPad with the LTE or 5G version. With 5G rolling out in many cities like San Francisco and New York, the speed you're getting outdoors might actually be faster than your home Wi-Fi. I didn't get the LTE version, so sometimes I'll use my phone as a hotspot for my iPad, but the speed isn't actually that fast. I think when I upgrade again in a few years, I will be getting the SIM card version. Lastly, I wanna talk about why I would probably never switch to buying a Windows computer again. And after hearing this, maybe you will switch to the dark side or the bright side. If you're an iPhone user, then you're probably familiar with what AirDrop is. I use it every day to dump my drawings from my iPad to my MacBook and I don't think I can live without it. It's super quick and fast, and best of all, you don't even need a wire. Next only Mac feature is called Sidecar, which essentially turns my iPad as an extra monitor to my MacBook Pro when I'm not using it. It's not the biggest display in the world, but it's very useful on the go if you're looking for more real estate to park some additional windows to. Lastly is the Mac ecosystem. At this point, I feel I'm way too invested into the Apple ecosystem with my iPhone, Apple Watch, Mac Pro, and iPad. And honestly, I don't see any reason to switch. Everything with Apple just works so well and seamless together, especially the cross-device synchronization is so good. When you put down one device and then you pick up another device, you can basically continue exactly where you left things off. So the bright side is, you can be extremely productive anywhere you want, but if you're not careful, you can easily become a workaholic this way too. So now over to you, I'd love to hear if there is a cool way that you are using your iPad 4 that I didn't mention in this video. And if you have any questions about anything I mentioned in this video, feel free to leave a comment in the link below. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.